Bryce Norton, Britain's largest military airbase. 8,000 men and women serve and live in a thriving community the size of a small town. It operates 24 hours a day with seven flying squadrons, two parachute units, Heart rate's going now. A world-class aeromedical evacuation unit. This is our number one priority, get this guy home. And an airport that dispatches and receives thousands of troops back home from war zones. I'm so excited, I want to cry. The most seasoned professionals rub shoulders with the newest recruits. Train hard, fight easy. Done correctly, it's a work of art. But it's more than just a military base. Supporting operations in Afghanistan, hosting traditional historic celebrations to the saddest of all occasions. Everything stops for the repatriation to take effect. Inside RAF Bryce Norton. In this episode, emotions run high in arrivals. I just want to cry. I'm so excited, I want to cry. <laughs> Everything stops for a repatriation. You can hardly hear a thing, you can hear the birds, and that's about it. It's very, very eerie for the size of the place, for the activities going on. And a young couple are reunited after six months apart. I can't see anyone. Right. <laughs> RAF Bryce Norton is Britain's biggest and busiest military airbase. It's home to multiple squadrons, each with their own fleet of different specialist aircraft and pilots. Around the clock, there's the constant roar of landing and takeoff. And since 2011, when the base took over from RAF Lynham as Britain's only air bridge or connection to Afghanistan, the skies have only got busier. Thousands of passengers pass through the terminal each month. It has all the look of a commercial airport, but the only difference is here, most people aren't going on holiday, they're going to war. Air Movement Squadron are based in the terminal and oversee all the logistics of keeping this place running like clockwork. Flight Lieutenant Owen Newman takes a huge amount of pride in his work. It is it's a lot of responsibility. It's a very, very busy job. Um, long hours, there's no eight to five or anything like that. You tend to work a lot more. You could argue that at Bryce Norton, our main effort is to get people through to keep the military moving, to keep defence moving. So that's our job, that's our purpose, in effect. But the realities of flying people in and out of the front line require more than cold military logistics. Staff like Owen have had to adapt to a huge rise in the sheer number of troops passing through the terminal. This is also one of the few places on the base where civilian families are granted access and Owen's keen to make sure their airport experience is a good one. Today, families are eagerly waiting to be reunited with troops returning from a six-month tour of duty. Who is it you come to meet? Uh, the daughter. Your daughter. And yeah, where's she been? She's been in... She's been out to Afghanistan. Out to Afghanistan. Yeah. Is yeah. she back on R&R &R or end of tour? Or... R&R. Yeah. She's come back for R&R? &R. Yeah. Good, good. There's a lot of military lingo here, as the civilians mix with RAF personnel. R&R &R is a mid-tour break, and theatre is a much more neutral way of referring to a war zone. Across the arrivals lounge, Kerry Kirby is waiting to see her husband, who is coming back for good. They were married 11 months ago and still haven't been on their honeymoon. We moved straight to Germany uh, two days after we got married. And then um, he, we had a couple of weeks there and then he was back in the UK doing um, courses and things like that. So we've barely just seen each other, to be honest. Um, I've come to meet my son, Tom. Bryce Norton Air Terminal is very, very different because of the, well, it's the passengers that we're getting through is such a variety. You get the holiday makers, you get the people going away for a break, you get people coming in and out from postings, but you also get the people going into theatre for, for the fighting. So we know how important our job is right from cradle to grave. I keep feeling for the last couple of days, I just want to cry. I'm so excited, I want to cry. <laughs> We're waiting for, um, I'll have to spell it because it's a surprise, we're waiting for DAD, um, but the children don't know. So um, Emma. we're waiting for Emma, that's right, we're waiting for Emma. 
Tracy Turley's husband is a third of the way through a seven-month tour of duty, serving on the front line in Afghanistan. It's a bit nervous. <laughs> it's a bit like a first date, really. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of new things he's, he hasn't seen. He doesn't know that he's walking a bit. The emotions from this side, um, there's, you'll always get the tears and the shouting and the little kids, especially with the little kids, it's brilliant to see them when they see their mum or dad. Look at the doors open, he's just popped his head room. Just to give him that little glimmer of hope that his dad is there. But we've got staff that said he can't run in and grab anything else. Anyway. Stomach starts churning. Yeah. And... The door opens and it. <laughs> it's when they all come out and they've got their, all their berets on and they're all dressed the same and then you can't see which one. No, is <laughs> they all look the same. <laughs> yeah. This has been the longest few hours. emotional every time. It's just nice to see it, just this. This is the bit that we're all working towards for every, all the procedures outside. You know, a lot of these guys, we'll see them again. They'll come back, they'll go through and they'll come back again, end of tour. And a lot of these families have been through this process time and again. Did you want to Did mummy surprise you? Obviously, um, it's not every job that sends you away for six months, sometimes nine months, sometimes a year at a time. Uh, it puts you in deliberate harm's way in some cases because that's what the military do in the interests of the nation. Uh, wives, families, partners are left behind. They have to cope. Oh, it's amazing because they didn't know it was a surprise. Uh, Honey! <laughs> <laughs> Camp Bastion is over three and a half thousand miles, seven and a half hours flight, and a world away from Bryce Norton. 22-year-old RAF policewoman Jamie Freer has spent the last six months in Afghanistan and is heading home for two weeks much needed R&R with boyfriend Callum Jack. He is in the Army Air Dispatch Unit at Bryce Norton and is waiting at the terminal to meet her. I've took the Monday off so we can spend the weekend together. We've got a couple of things planned, weddings to go to, a few parties to have. Basically, just spend some time together. Oh, come on. I can't wait. It's been the longest time the pair have been apart since they got together, one and a half years ago. I'm quite nervous, got sweaty hands now, thinking about it. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous, but so excited at the same time. Jamie and Callum have two weeks ahead of them to relax and spend time together. Oh, God. Next, Owen's starstruck. David Beckham had a wee in there. <laughs> and an air steward experiences job satisfaction. This is one of the best jobs we actually have on board the aircraft, is uh, cleaning the toilets <laughs> and filling them up. It's brilliant. Bryce Norton is home to the biggest and busiest military terminal in the UK. And like most major airports, it has its own first-class lounge for VIP guests. One of the thrills of Owen's job is rubbing shoulders here with the rich and famous. Prince William sat there, David Beckham on this one. We've had Cheryl Cole, David Jason, Martin Clunes, a variety of celebrities and royals. Uh, they've all been through here. They come in here because they like the hassle-free service that they get. They don't get asked for autographs, photographs, anything like that. They come in, we treat them with respect, and we get them through as fast and efficient as we possibly can. Prince William, he tried to send a text from out there. Unfortunately, he couldn't. 
because of the network coverage. I asked him what network he was on with his mobile, he told me, so I told him where to get the best reception. So I can tell you Vodafone is in that corner there, Orange is about there, you get about a two bar, you get to know. So that does come in handy, maybe trivial, but it's that extra bit for the service. David Beckham had a wee in there. <laughs> RAF Bryson Norton is Britain's only air bridge or connection to military operations in Afghanistan. After nearly four months in Camp Bastion, 22-year-old RAF police dog handler Jamie Freer is back for a fortnight of R&R. &R. She spent the last week with her boyfriend Callum. It's weird that I've been back like a whole week now and that I go back on Tuesday. It's just so strange. A week ago you were waiting for me in the airport. Yeah, all exciting, honestly. Yeah. Like a little school kid. <laughs> Being in a military relationship where you're obviously deployed in two different countries, it's totally different because obviously we don't get to see each other every day or every night. We don't come home to each other every day or every night and we can't just pick up our mobiles and call each other willy-nilly and it does make things a lot more difficult and we understand that. Obviously you've got to trust each other, you've got to comfort each other, you've got to be there for each other. If you're not like that then it just would never work. So Trust for, is the biggest thing, Yeah. because you're away for so long, that's what a lot of people will find hardest. Being able to trust someone for six months, being away that long, is, is the, it's not an easy thing to do. No. Some people like do struggle, but I think this was our make or break. I suppose you never really relax. You enjoy your time, and obviously you have an amazing time, but there is always that factor of, I'm going back. You, you've always got that there, you're always thinking that that you know you've only got so many days before you're going back. We should have a normal relationship, hopefully, when we get back from Afghan for, for a period of about a year, year and a half, before we get um, notice of going on pre-deployment or going away again. So hopefully for that year, year and a half, because we're both now at the same base at Bryce. Um, we'll be able to settle down, obviously, because we want to get a house and things when we get back. That's what we're saving towards at the moment. Spending time with Callum's not the only thing Jamie has missed while she's been away. She wants to catch up with her last patrol dog, Omar, at Bryce Norton's dog unit. Hello, my little man. Oh, hello. Oh, he's a beautiful boy, aren't you? So handsome. Oh, no. I just feel so much better because now that I know that he's okay and he's living in such a nice place now and obviously he's obviously got a good handler because he's looking well and he's just he seems really happy and which makes me happy that he's happy obviously. I'll see you soon, all right mate? Good boy. I'll see you later. Bye bye. With just a few days of R and R left, Jamie will soon be back in Afghanistan and must prepare to say her goodbyes. She and Callum are both aware that she's returning to a war zone. Bye-bye, little man. What we have to remember is that uh, we joined up the military and war is not pleasant. You will see death in war. You know, the people die. It's a harsh reality of life. The role has changed dramatically since I joined up and it is more demanding now and dangerous, I suppose, for want of a better expression. On average, 80 aircraft touch down and take off from RAF Bryce Norton's three kilometre long runway every day. It's 4.45 a.m. and a team from 216 Squadron are preparing one of their tri-stars to fly troops waiting in the terminal to Afghanistan. Air steward Mike Greenhouse and his colleagues are doing the first leg of the journey to Cyprus. This is, this is one of the best jobs we actually have on board the aircraft, is uh, cleaning the toilets <laughs> and filling them up. It's brilliant. Before working for the RAF, Mike was a flight attendant on a commercial airline. In Civvy Street, it's a lot more uh, service orientated because you've got stuff to sell and stuff to do, whereas military, there's, there's none of that. But the, the passengers that we actually take are, are very different. They're going out into um, a situation where, you know, they, they might not be coming back from and it's going to change them quite a lot. So we have to adapt the way we communicate with them, really. Just, uh, just straight down there for me, please. Thank you. Usually, 
uh, when the guys are going out into theatre, they're quite, quite sad. It's, it's quite hard because obviously they're leaving so many people behind. They're leaving all the family loved ones. If I was in their situation and I was going out into a war zone, I'd, I'd probably be in tears on the, on the jet, to be, honest, to be honest. These guys are going into some really bad situations and you've just got to be that smiley, happy face, haven't you? You've just got to, um, you've just got to speak to them if they're looking a bit nervous, just uh, reassure them that it, it, it's going to be fine and they're going to come back. It can be quite hard. I think the passengers do like us being there. We do get a bit of banter, um, trolley dolly and all that palaver and, oh, you must be gay because you're a steward and it's like, well, you never know, I might be, I might not be. <laughs> the most challenging moment for troops is when the cabin lights turn off before landing in Afghanistan. Normal procedure, we're only doing this so no enemies can see us and kind of shoot at us. So some of them have done it before then um, they're going to tell the, the comrades, oh, it's, it's all right, it's fine, nothing's going to happen, it's just a procedure. So, yeah, it's still quite scary, though. But here in Cyprus, there's no threat to landing. It's just a quick changeover for the troops before heading out to Afghanistan. For Mike, it's a stopover before a much more upbeat flight, bringing troops back home to Bryce Norton. But not all flights returning home are a cause for celebration. In the past year, RAF Bryce Norton has seen over 21 repatriation ceremonies of 46 dead servicemen and women from overseas since it took over the duty from RAF Lynham in September 2011. Thursdays are the usual repatriation day at this West Oxfordshire base. And when this sad day comes around, the mood across the terminal changes as the airport takes on a different role. A repatriation ceremony will take place today at 14.30 hours local. As a sign of respect, the following movement embargoes will be in force. Between 13.15 hours and 13.40 hours local, there will be a total ban of all airside vehicle and aircraft movements for the duration of the approach and landing of the repatriation aircraft. Everything stops for the PABI to, for the repatriation to take effect. You can hardly hear a thing, you can hear the birds, and that's about it. It's very, very eerie for the size of the place, for the activities going on. Just silence. It's quite sombre. It's quite strange, but you can hear the silence everywhere. It's really... And you can just hear the engines of the C-17 now taxiing by 14.30 on the dot for the families in the repatriation centre. Usually, I'd be on that aircraft. Pat, my job would be on the top of the ramp, and I coordinate with the the warrant officer escort on the aircraft for when the hearse has parked up at the repatriation centre. The doors are open. Once everything is in place for a swift offload of the of the coffin into the hearse, when that's ready, I give the thumbs up, and then the coffin bearers are already on the aircraft. They lift the coffin and off they go. All goes like clockwork. It's sad that it does go like clockwork, but it needs to be that efficient, it needs to be that precise. I've been fortunate not to know personally any of the people involved, uh, thankfully. Uh, I couldn't imagine what it, I mean, it's almost a reality check, you know of what we do, and it's another part of the job. I mean, ideally, you'd never want to do it. You, you know, it, it wouldn't happen, but the reality of it is it happens, and unfortunately, it happens quite often. It happens quite a lot. When, whenever I'm involved with the ceremony, once I get on the aircraft at the top of the runway, my little ritual, if you want, I'll go in and I'll welcome them all home, and I'll touch the coffins, welcome home, boys. Each and every one of them. It's not, it, I suppose it's a habit, I guess, just my little way of, you know, welcome home. Welcome home, boys. Next, airport security are on the lookout for dangerous objects. 
We're checking free prohibited items like gas canisters, bladed articles that people shouldn't have, any, anything that, that basically you wouldn't take on a civilian foot on holiday with you. Owen enforces rules of the airfield. Hello, mate. Can I actually stick with a 10 mile an hour speed limit on the airfield, please? And it's time for Jamie to go back to Afghanistan. I wanted to if I could bring her back home and take her back home now. And at its center is the terminal. The 23 million kilograms of freight, luggage and mail that are processed here each year undergo the same rigorous security checks as any civilian airport. And like its commercial counterparts, the terminal employs man's best friend to sniff out any danger. Uh, Sooty is generally a multi-purpose dog. He'll search for all types of weapons, commercial um, and homemade explosives. They're definitely not cheap dogs. But they reckon about 30,000 it would take to train Sooty up to stand that he's at now. Over 200,000 passengers pass through in a year. 15% of them at Bryce Norton's airport are civilians, from family visiting personnel to contractors working abroad. Please have your boarding card, identity card, passport ready for inspection. Today, troops and their families are checking in for a flight to Cyprus, and behind the scenes in baggage handling, eagle-eyed airport security officers process the luggage. How many packs have we got on the flight? Is that all military in there, is it? Military baggage can frequently contain more dangerous items than your average suitcase. We're checking free prohibited items like gas canisters, bladed articles that people shouldn't have, any, anything that, that basically you wouldn't take on a civilian flight on holiday with you. Rounds from weapons where the guys have been out on exercise, the guys do invariably forget to take them out of their bags. But today, thankfully, the closest thing Katie finds to a dangerous weapon is a set of irons. Yeah. Around a golf, anyone? In departures, troops are waiting for a flight to Afghanistan. Jamie Freer's fortnight of rest and recuperation has come to an end, and she must now complete her six-month tour of duty. It's heart-wrenching for both her and boyfriend Callum. I've just had to say goodbye to Jamie after our two weeks together. Uh, I'm quite gutted, actually, because it went too fast, but really I just wanted to get out there now so she can get this 11 weeks out of the way with and we can get back together. It's always hard saying goodbye and things to the people you love. Um, and obviously it's hard for them as well because they don't want to see you go. And obviously with Callum, he knows exactly the situation I'm going into, so it's even harder for him. If I'm honest, I could bring her back home and take her back home now. With all passengers with the surnames F to J, please proceed forward. It just makes you realise just how much you love the people that you're going to have to say goodbye to, really. It's upsetting, but you just got to try and stay strong and just think, well, it's, it's not goodbye, it's I'll see you soon. Callum's now got a long wait until he sees Jamie again, and only time will tell if their relationship will last the distance. Living produces its own stresses and strains. Add to that being in the military, being away for that length of time, coping on your own if you're a partner left behind. Uh, yes, it's, it's pretty intense. The relationship has to be strong. Um, certainly the, for the, the wives and the husbands left back at home, you know, there's a lot more for them to contend with because they don't know what's going on. They get, what, 40 minute phone calls or emails back, uh, that's, and that's sporadic. The terminal at RAF Bryce Norton is the beating heart of a base run by the Air Movement Squadron. Its staff don't just get passengers in and out, it's their job to keep an eye on the airfield, to make sure aircraft run on time and personnel play by the rules. Luckily, Air Movement's maestro and self-confessed safety obsessive, Owen Newman, is dedicated to the cause. We've got a lot of uh, inbound passengers today, both coming from theatre, from Cyprus, from exercise, so we've got to keep on the ball with that, making sure all the procedures are all working correctly um, and safely. That's the main thing, is that they're safe. It could be something from driving the vehicles around the aircraft. It needs to be marshaled at all times. The hybrid's vests. It may seem trivial to some people, but it is very, very important. And the first offender of the day is a pilot who should know better. Do you want to go and get your vest, please? Yeah, 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 OK, I'll get it. Yeah. I was just heading over there, actually. If you're crossing the MT, well, anything airside, you need to have your hybrid vest on, but mainly specifically for crossing the MT route. It is uh, one guy go from one building to the next, and whilst it may only be the matter of 100, 200 metres, he still should have the hybrid vest on. Uh, some of them think that they don't need to because it's daylight or because they'd only go in a couple of hundred yards. 
but the policy states they need to wear them on air side. And Owen's prepared to go the extra mile to get his message across. People have said that when I am going to speak to people, my walk changes apparently. When they see me walking around, they know if I'm going to speak to somebody to educate them or whether I'm just wandering from A to B. <laughs> Can I ask you to stick to the 10 mile an hour speed limit on the airfield, please? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. When you're around on the airfield, you must have one on, OK? Thank you. Now we've got the crew walking on the aircraft with no high vis. Here we go again. Never ending, isn't it? Never ending. Back in the airport terminal building at Air Movement Squadron, Owen shares an office with friend and colleague John McClymont. Hello, Jerry. How are you? John has worked with Owen for nearly a year, and he knows that it's not just breaking the rules on the airfield that winds Owen up. Owen is a nightmare, and what he hates seeing is that. He absolutely hates it. And there are so many plugs in the office, and we all do it on purpose, we'll just leave them on. Because we know as soon as he clocks it, he'll go around every single plug, and he'll press them all off. Is this have a go at me day today, is it? Every. Bloody time, I go out for two minutes. He does it, but he done yours. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you not going to go around the rest no. of the office there? No, you could do Joking that. Joking aside, um, yes, we do have a good laugh. We do have a lot of fun. It is, the morale is really high, but it has to be. Um, very important, this job. Um, it's probably one of the best jobs that I've had. A lot of times I do sort of wonder if you can get any busier, because it does get very, very busy. Uh, but if I can leave, when I go home, as long as I've got a smile on my face, I'm happy. Why do people put them on if there's nothing on them? I thought I didn't understand. Oh, he's got a camera. There. At her home in Hampshire, military wife and mother Tracy Turley is counting the days until her soldier and medic husband Andrew will be landing at Bryce Norton to return home after seven months in Afghanistan. She last saw him when he was back for two weeks, R&R. &R. First two weeks that he went, I felt like I'd lost my right arm. Um, and I can remember sitting in the kitchen, crying my eyes out and thinking, oh God, I'm going to cope, how am I going to do this? On the outside, I do look really tough and as if I can cope, but some days you just feel you can't. This tour's taught me that, yeah, I can put a swing slide set together. Yeah, I can take the car to the garage. I can do a lot more, like when the dish dishwasher broke down, that was like my right arm had gone. But I mended it, I did it myself. When he first went, broke my heart. You just pray that he's going to come back safe and he's going to be fine. Um, and touch wood, he's had his nine lives, I think. He's had a couple of mini misses. He's now Me? practically deaf in one ear from noises and stuff um, and explosions. What should I do? Do you feel brave enough to do the onions? No, because I'm, they do get my nose a bit. Do you want your apron? I think I miss him more because of the children. Because they've missed, he's missed out on all their birthday parties, he's missed out and stuff. But I am really lucky. My husband's coming home. From Afghanistan, Andrew makes a call to check on his family. Are you very excited? Oh, bless you. I love you too. I'll see you soon. He's got just a week to go before he comes home for good. And the best thing, really, about being an army wife is we do get the opportunity for them to go away and to miss them. And actually, your feelings realise how much you do love them. You know, and in some cases, people realise that actually, no, I don't love them and I don't want to be with them. Every day, every day, we think about him all the time. And every night, when they do their calendars and they cross, it, cross the days off, we talk about Dad all the time. How many seats is that, then? Daddy comes home. Yeah, eight sleeps. <laughs> so they hear their dad's voice every night, and there's three different stories. Sometimes we get through all three, sometimes we get through one. Um, but it's nice because they it's as if he's here um, as part of bedtime routine. My daddy's very clever. He's a very clever man. He does all sorts of clever things like clever daddies can. Because they love their dad so much, it's hard for him as well, you know, because he wants to be there. I miss his company. I just miss, you know, even though nine times out of ten he'll sit and fall asleep, <laughs> he's just there. It's just having him there. Fine, that's fine. And if it's hard being apart, reunions aren't necessarily plain sailing either. 
It will take a while to, to reconnect and find themselves back where they are. And as human nature, we all change and grow and develop. Actually, that will have been going on, so you won't come back necessarily to exactly the same person. Back at Bry's Norton, Callum Jack is looking forward to the imminent return of his girlfriend, Jamie, who's just finished her six-month tour in Afghanistan. She's at Camp Bastion Airport, waiting to come home to him for good. I can't even explain how much I missed home. It's something you just can't describe. It's always in the back of your mind. You're always thinking about what the people that you care and love are doing. You miss them so much. When Jamie went away, the last thing on my mind, or I wouldn't even think about it ever, wherever she went, was the trust side of it. It didn't bother me the fact that she could have went somewhere where there was 50 lads and one girl, and for us not to have one little, oh, little bit the lads were like lecturing over you when you are sunbathing. Nah, not once, not even, probably like said it jokingly, but I, we never had a serious conversation about it, which was really good. People have banter, obviously, like they might have a bit of a joke and a flirt, but there's always a line and people know not to cross it. If someone was hitting on me at work, I'd probably just politely take them to one side, remind them of where we are, what job we're doing, and politely say that I'm not interested. I do have a boyfriend and I'm in a happy relationship, so uh, sorry, but no. The time can pass much more quickly for the partner who's working on a demanding but rewarding job away from home. There are people who um, enjoy going out, not because they want to be away from family, but because actually the, the tempo, the buzz, the adrenaline, the, the kind of work they're doing, they feel like they're actually making a real difference on the front line um, or wherever it is um, that they are. They can, they can see, um, actually, it's what they train for. You know, when they're putting in X amount of hours of training, that's what they train for and that's what they feel they're, they're, they're contributing. Next, a soldier returns to Bryce Norton. I'm really looking forward to seeing the family. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming. Owen's got a surprise in store for John. Look at that, isn't that nice? And the birthday card. I'm off my 11 o'clock. And finally, Jamie and Callum are reunited for good. <laughs> Sending troops in and out of the front line all over the world. Every March and September, it's time for what's known as the RIP, or relief in place, where thousands of troops ending their tours of duty are brought home and fresh ones sent to replace them. RAF dog handler Jamie Frears posting in Afghanistan has come to an end. It was an amazing, amazing six months to work with my two dogs that I had out there. They were just such, such brilliant dogs had amazing little characters about them and they were the ones that made my tour really. I wouldn't have got through it without them. And I just, I miss them so much already. I really do. She's returning via Cyprus, where troops from Afghanistan undergo for 24 hours what's known as decompression. It's just a, a chance for people to sort of relax and chill out and have some form of normality before going back to the UK and obviously being thrown in the mix of it. How's your sunburn? There are quite a lot of psychological changes which we go through when we leave a war zone and before we land at RAF Prize Norton in the air terminal and meet our families and friends. Mm. Once they get at Cyprus, they're usually hanging out of there, you know, proverbial. And so we need to give them the opportunity to have three hots and a cot, a good meals and some chance to sleep. Soldiers spend a day unwinding on the beach. They're given alcohol for the very first time since they left the UK. And there's a cunning ulterior motive behind it. Soldiers having a little bit of an awareness that having four cans of lager, they get a hangover the next morning, when before they went out to Afghanistan, they were drinking 10, 12, 15 pints a day. OK, that's a little bit of a useful piece of information to know that their capacity uh, to drink isn't quite what it was. I don't think it'd be too hard to adjust because, you know, your, f your family and friends will support you no matter what, so I think it, it's just going to take time, but at the same time, it's just an amazing feeling to know that you're just going home. After decompression in Cyprus, troops will board the aircraft bound for RAF Bryce Norton. Mike Greenhouse works as an air steward on these homebound flights from Cyprus on a regular basis. There's a marked difference in the atmosphere on the aircraft from those flights taking troops out to theatre. 
Yeah, it's like Christmas. It's just, it just feels so nice. The fact that we are bringing them home first of all, and they're all, they're all all right. They're all okay. They're all fine. We get to give them a beer as well on the way back into Cyprus, which is quite nice. Some of them do take it, and some of them don't. And you'll find a lot of them haven't finished the beers. And they get a couple of little snide remarks from the friends, <laughs> which can be quite funny. One of the soldiers coming back home is Andrew Turley. He's desperate to be reunited with his family. I'm uh, nervous, but excited. I'm really looking forward to seeing the family. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming. Uh, very, very excited. Just can't wait to see the kids. I'm getting my best friend back. I'm getting my husband back. I'm getting my children's daddy back. All in one go, in one day. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Tracy and other families have decided to lay on a welcome party for Andrew and the other soldiers returning to their army base in Hampshire. Hey. 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 I miss them, miss them so much. The kids have grown up loads and, you know, little Ryan doesn't know who I am because he was a baby when I left, so we have to take my time getting to know him. Uh, and there's just getting back into family life slowly, but absolutely fantastic to be home. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. For the families, when you come back again, yeah, it is really hard. There is an adjustment. I mean, the guys are coming to the door thinking it's going to be wonderful and they're going to have porn star sex as soon as they walk in. It doesn't always work like that, although they're glad to see you. I knew that Ryan would be a bit upset and he's had a little bit of a wobbly, but give it a couple of days and he'll get used to his dad. He knows his dad's voice. I think he thinks he lives in the telephone. <laughs> but, oh, made up, really chuffed. Got my husband back. <laughs> Got my husband back. Air Movement's Officer Supreme, Owen Newman, is a man who's always up to something. Every time I go past the cushions, I move him out of sync. And if she spots me, she either throws the pillows at me as she comes. Yeah. She, she throws the cushions at me and she has a bit of a a bit of a moody. All for the morale. All for morale, of course. Morale is a big thing for me. It's one of the things that I firmly believe is if you've got a you know a happy ship is an efficient ship and providing everybody's happy, you can't please everybody, but as everybody's everybody contented and morale is good, you will always get more out of people. Today's a special day for Owen's right-hand man, Flight Sergeant John McClymont. Look at that, isn't that nice? Another birthday card. Is it your birthday? It's your birthday. Yes! <laughs> Owen's not going to let a big day like this go quietly. I've arranged to get a table booked down the gateway where we go and have lunch every now and again. I'm going to surprise him. My wife, Angie, she's made a cake. With ice saying we're going to go pick it up. Soon, we'll go and pick that up. And uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise. Owen's next task is to go and get the cake. Here we go, birthday boy. Don't get used to it, would I? He's invented a meeting as much. an excuse to leave I'm the off office. My... I'm off my 11 o'clock. It's important that we do make these, well, big occasions, these special occasions, we make them what they are because there is, there's a lot of, you know, sadness, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ups and downs. So the more we can do to, if anything, just to remember, to let that person know that they're not just there to do a job and, you know, and get on with it. They're not just a number. They, they are thought of. We do remember, you know, it may just be a birthday. We may just book a table for them or make a cake for them. But to them, you know, I know I'd feel pretty chuffed a bit if someone remembered or, you know, went to that effort. So it is, it's important that we remember these things. Can we put that in the fridge, actually? Is that... You can. I'll take it into the kitchen, then just ask for it when you want it. Owen's managed to recruit some friends and family to help out with the decorations. And everything's set up for the birthday boy. Yeah, he's coming in now. We're having lunch. Birthday. <laughs> oh, my God. Happy birthday oh, to me. Man. Hey! Yeah. That is Look awesome. <laughs> totally shocked. Totally shocked. But uh, you can see in his face, he's, he's chuffed a bit through that. He's taking pictures of it now. 
it have the desired effect. We're all just like one big family. I mean, um, we have a bit of fun, and yeah, we, um, we care about each other, and it's nice to do these little surprises now and again. It's appreciated. Within the forces, generally, you do make really good friends. Um, better friends, I don't know, I couldn't really say that, but you do a very, very close friendship because you bond, you put in a lot of adverse conditions where you have to trust, you have to rely on, on your colleagues a lot more so than, say, in, in a normal life, you know, for want of a better phrase. So you do tend to trust them a lot more and you get to learn a lot more about them. So yes, you do bond a lot more. I'm gobsmacked, but I think really it sums up the fact that we are so close and we do have a great working relationship. I'm quite touched by it, if I'm really honest. Fantastic. Um, what can I say? What a great bunch. <laughs>First, it'll be really good because we'll be excited to see each other. But then, after about two or three days, it'll start to get in. We'll have to start adjusting to each other's lives because she'll have to adjust to get back to the UK, and I'll have to adjust to her being back and having to like not just think about myself, think about like think of her as well. I don't think it did change things between me and Callum being separated. I mean, if anything, it only made us stronger. And obviously. Before that, we'd not we'd not been apart. So obviously now we know we can be apart and still get through it, and that we know that there always is a light at the end of the tunnel. The experienced older medic shows utter disgust at his younger self next tonight as Sky Arts 1 HD's brand new series continues The Young Doctor's Notebook and other stories. Whilst here on Sky 1 HD, the usual winning partnership undergoes a knock in a classic Moonboy.